talk to Colin Rayner, who's director and farmer at Rayner Farms. Uh, Colin, really good to see you this morning. Uh, I, I'm a bit perturbed about this. I mean, I come from a farming background. I mean, how are you meant to manage without antibiotics? You can't do it, can you? Um, good morning. Sorry, I'm looking a bit tired. We were out harvesting till midnight last night, trying to get in some uh, uh, harvest crops before the wane. Um, the, the people of this country have got to wake up. We've got two choices. We either produce food using all the tools we have in the toolbox, which is medicines and good vets, or we don't. If we don't have medicines, animals will die a horrible, dreadful death. Animals will then become unprofitable and we'll stop producing animals in this country. And this is not an attack on the farmers, an attack on the whole of our country. We need to be self-sufficient in food and we need to be able to use these antibiotics to save our animals and i don't know where they're getting their science from but i doubt if it's very safe and i'm concerned for the future of the agricultural industry if these people get their way and these are very small minority of people we do not use antibiotics unless we really have to they are very expensive and also they are time consuming to um, administer. You know, at the moment we only administer antibiotics on a, on a vet's recommendation. So there is a problem, there could be some resistance, but I think that the, the issues we've got, we've got to produce our own food. Uh, and if we don't produce in this country, we'll, it'll be produced in some foreign country that has totally unregulated medicine use. So, the people in this country have got to wake up and say, do we want food from British farmers where the medicines are regulated extremely hard, they are administered and given prescription by vets, or do we import food from a third world country where there is no control on the medicines that are given to animals? And this Sorry, new legislation the then, I don't, quite, I don't quite get it. Is it going to be more relaxed than it was under the EU, or is it going to be much tighter and more difficult for farmers? Basically, it's going to be the same, but these people want it to be uh, uh, more stringent controls of our use of medicines for animals. I mean, the, the argument they make, Colin, is that a, a lot of farmers are, are routinely giving antibiotics as a preemptive measure. Um, I mean, from what you're saying, that doesn't seem to be the case. Do they know how expensive antibiotics are? You don't do anything routinely. And we don't make enough money as it is. So these people, where do they get that, those facts from? Could they send me the data? And I'm fed up with people making facts where they have no data. We need the data. You know, let me show them the data where farmers are routinely using antibiotics every day. I don't know a farmer that does. So are you suggesting this concern is sort of they're making a mountain out of a molehill here? Or scaring. I think it's people that have a different agenda. And you what know, agenda would that be? On uh, the farmers of this country and the people of this country, they don't want us to be eating meat, and they don't want it produced in the UK. They much prefer it to be imported from some third world country where there is no control on the drugs that are, are, are used. And we the same have we have the same problem with oilseed rape. They banned a chemical on unsafe science. So we no longer grow vast sums of oil, oil seed rape in this country. That's now imported from countries that use the same chemical that's banned in this country. The whole world is madness. Yeah, it doesn't make a, a, a lot of sense, does it? I mean, one of, one of the sort of umbrella groups behind all of this, of course, are these animal welfare charities. What, what, what can you tell us about how farmers like you handle animal welfare on your farms? How important is it to you? It's so important. You know, we, you know, we've been farming for over 500 years, looking after the countryside, looking after our animals. If we don't look after animals, they won't make us any money and we'll go bankrupt. But farmers do it for the love of farming. We're not here for the money, I can assure you that. You know, as I said, we've been harvesting till midnight last night. My chaps came back in at five o'clock. We're preparing for another day's harvest. We are moment uh, harvesting uh, grass, so we have enough feed for our cattle during the winter. And 
we're working jolly hard and we make sure that we look after our cattle, uh, our sheep, and we do it, we actually look after them sometimes better than our own families, and that's a bit of a shame, but we know, uh, we have a great deal of pride. And we just had, uh, in the last week, other farmers come in to judge our farms to make sure that we are the best of the best. And we have a local um, agricultural uh, association called the Royal East Parks Agricultural Association, and each year we invite judges from other farmers to come and check on our farms and find out who is the best farmer. And we wouldn't be entering those competitions if our cattle and sheep were not looked after with love and care and attention. Do you think most of us, most people, non-farming people, have no idea of what it is like to be a farmer and how difficult things are? I, I'm, I'm surprised that people do. And after Jeremy Clarkson's wonderful series that did more for farming in 30 years than Country uh, File has, that it's told us about the real agonies and pains. Mm. You know, my men had five hours sleep. Men and women had five hours sleep last night. We're now facing another, we'll be here till midnight tonight, unless the weather pours down. And if the weather pours down, we're then going to look after the cattle. So it's a juggling act. And we're trying to bring in this year's harvest so we can feed this country. And that's what we do every day. We are here to produce food on another subject, we now have a government that wants us to produce wildflowers. Well, that's a, yeah. a subject for another day. We have to feed the nation. And you've got to remember, at the beginning of the Second World War, when this country went hungry, in the first month of the war, 50,000 dogs were put down by the government because there was no food to feed the dogs. Mm -hmm. And would the public ever want that? You know, if we ran hungry, you know, would they stomach? you know, our, our pets being put down because there's no food for them, let alone yeah. us. You know, you just look into our history. My grandparents, even though they lived on and worked on a farm, they went hungry in the Second World War. Do we want to do that again? Uh, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. It's about time we appreciated what our farmers yeah. do. Yeah. I think, look, really good to see you this morning. Thank you very much, Nadia, to let you get back Go to it. Try and get some clip in today <laughs> if you can.